you join us in our opening song, Our God is Here, number 98. The intention for this Mass is for Brian Feebold. We pray also for all those who are near death. We pray that through the intercession of St. Joseph, they may have a happy and peaceful death. That their faith, our faith, in our living God may assist them as they prepare for their transit from this life to God in eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. And we come before the Lord knowing that he is here ready to embrace us, ready to assist us, ready to walk with us, and ready to nourish us. And so we prepare for this encounter by recognizing our failures, by recognizing all the times that we have violated the commandments of our God, commandments that are intended for us to have a good life, And so we ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I had greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through the most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, the Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given to him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. 
The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who Observe his degrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Be good to your servant that I may live and keep your Open my eyes that I may consider the wonders of your law. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes that I may exactly observe them. Give me discernment that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our, for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The Word of the Lord.
the mystery of the kingdom. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, You fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, Leave your gift there at the altar. Go first, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more? is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, 
Well, good morning, and I want to express my appreciation for those parents that I've already witnessed chasing little ones, harnessing little ones, trying their best. Um, God bless you. Thank you for being here and all that it takes to get your families here. Welcome to the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time, where we will continue to experience the wisdom of Jesus at the Sermon on the Mount. Two weeks ago, Jesus proclaimed the Beatitudes, telling us what, is, what it means to be counted among the blessed in God's kingdom. I'm going to ask you to take a moment and just see how many you can recall. Blessed are, and just think, the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, the merciful, the peacemakers, the clean of heart, those who are persecuted for righteousness. But today, our psalmist added a few more. Let me repeat what you just heard our psalmist proclaim. Blessed are they whose way is blameless. Blessed are they who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him, with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Today, today in our first reading, we clearly hear it is up to us to choose life or death. It is God's gift of free will for us to choose, to choose the waters of eternal life through the sacraments, over the fires of the ungodliness of sin, to choose, as the scripture said, I hope you heard it, the immense wisdom of God, to choose the immense wisdom of God, yes, we are given free will to choose our destiny, our eternal destiny. In our second reading, St. Paul tells us that all the wisdom of the gospel surpasses the wisdom of this age that is passing away. The revelation of this wisdom fulfills God's plan from before all ages and for all ages, God's wisdom is not passing away. We are called to trust in this wisdom of God and to live by his kingdom's laws, as radical as they are. Which brings us brings us to today's gospel, where Jesus tells us that he has not come to abolish the law of Moses, but to fulfill it and the teachings of the prophets. He reveals the deeper meaning and the purpose of the Ten Commandments and the moral law of the Old Testament, but his gospel also transcends the law. He demands a morality far greater than that accomplished by the most pious of the Jewish leaders. Some of you may be familiar with track and field. I, I wasn't in that sport where there's a bar for the high jumpers and the pole vaulters. And they, meet you, they read a goal, reach a goal and then they try to raise the bar. And maybe the coach tries to raise it again and say, you can do it. Well, Jesus raises the bar. He doesn't lower it, as some of the religious leaders had done in their times and had not followed the law of God, but had been hypocrites and made it very difficult for many to live faithfully then. And as some in this day and age some from within the church, some outside of the church, try to put pressure, pressure on our Holy Father, 
pressure on our bishops, pressure on the church to lower the bar, to become more contemporary, to meet more with society where it is. Topics, pressure, pressure, pressure. Lower the bar on things like birth control. Lower the bar on things like divorce and remarriage. Lower the bar on just marriage itself. The church continues to fight the good fight. Outward observance of the law is not enough. It's not enough that we do not murder, we do not commit adultery, we do not divorce, we do not lie. He also wants us to examine our internal actions, the motivations of our heart. What? are your motivations. The law of the new covenant is the law that God writes on our hearts. No longer on the stone tablets unless we have hearts of stone, but on our hearts. The heart, scripture says, is the seat of our motivations, the place from which our words and actions proceed. In the Gospel of Matthew, later on, it says, What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And Matthew also says, From where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus calls on us to train our hearts, to master our passions and emotions. He demands full obedience of our hearts. Listen to this from St. Paul to the Romans. You who once were slaves to sin have become obedient, obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you are committed. He calls on us to love God with all our hearts and to do his will from our hearts. Matthew says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. This is the greatest commandment. And St. Paul again in Ephesians 6 says, Be obedient. Do the will of God from your heart, not out of obligation. From your heart. Jesus takes on the difficult issues of adultery, divorce, lying, murder. He moves these issues to a new level. He wants us to examine the underlying causes of these sins. Murder, for instance. He says the harboring of anger is what needs to be dealt with, which can lead one to violence. Adultery, it's the lusting of the eye, the lusting of the flesh that must be addressed that could possibly lead to adultery. Divorce, if only if it is an unlawful or invalid marriage. He calls it the permanent calls on the permanent nature of marriage. Oaths. He says, just don't do them. It's similar to taking the Lord's name in vain to say, to swear by God. Just be honest, be truthful, make your yes, yes, and your no, no. Yes, Jesus has raised the bar. We, the question is, are we willing to strive to reach this new standard? Or will we reject his wisdom. It's our free will. We must choose daily. We will continue to hear from this critical and wise Sermon on the Mount in the following weeks. Hear more of God's wisdom for life. But now, I'd like to just conclude my remarks with... <clears throat> A little, look, a little look back 
at the first reading from the book of Sirach. And if you're not familiar with the book of Sirach, if you're not familiar with that section, what the church calls the wisdom books, I just want to encourage you, take the time, open this book of wisdom, open Sirach, read Sirach. Where we hear in Sirach some profound truths about choosing to follow these new moral standards of God. If you choose, if you choose, you can keep the commandments, we are told. They will save you. If you trust in God, you shall live. Before, before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever you choose shall be given to you. It is your free will. Choose the immense wisdom of the Lord. And our psalmist said, and today it's a part of Psalm 19, 119, the longest psalm in the Bible, but also one of the most profound psalms about the wisdom and the wisdom in following God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord, we just sang, whose way is blameless, who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart, with all their heart not token gestures out of obligation. How can a young man keep his ways pure? The psalmist says, by guarding it according to God's word. And let me conclude with just a sampling of this immense wisdom of God. St. Paul said in our second reading and from our book of Proverbs, we speak a wisdom not of this age, nor of the rulers and leaders of this age. Theirs will pass away. Oh, how well we know that. Just listening to our leaders of this age. This secular wisdom that's contrary to God's wisdom, it is doomed to fail. We speak of God's wisdom which God has revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. Here is just a bit from the Proverbs. And let me again encourage you, if you have not opened the book of Proverbs for a long time, even if you're just going to do a part of it, go to Proverbs 3 and 4. Spend a little bit of time there. So rich in this immense wisdom of God. For the Lord gives wisdom... From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Happy the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire can compare to her. Let your heart hold fast to my words. Keep my commandments and live. Do not forget. Do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Get wisdom, get insight. Do not forsake her and she will keep you. Love her, she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, get insight. Prize her highly. So, the psalmist says, Hear, my children, accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. Keep hold of my instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not walk in the ways of evil men. Avoid it. Do not go on that path. Turn away from it. With your gift of free will, may each of us choose to follow 
the immense wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Would our candidates and catechumens please come forward? My dear candidates and catechumens, the Lord calls each of us to be at peace with one another. He calls us to a spiritual maturity which involves a forgiving heart. Through the power of his word, may each of you overcome any indifference, any anger you may have for those who have been stumbling blocks in your lives. Go now in the peace of Christ to be nourished on the word of God. We look forward to the day when you will also gather with us around the Eucharistic table. Go in peace. now unify our hearts in professing the faith that unifies us all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our lives are the result of many choices. Let us cho take this moment and choose to love one another by remembering each other's needs. And before we bring our gift to the altar, let us pray in the name of our Lord Jesus who came to teach us the ways of the kingdom. that divided Christians may earnestly seek reconciliation. 
so that we can together offer our gifts at the altar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That hearts may be transformed so that angry nations and angry peoples may come to an experience of divine healing and a new springtime of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our married couples may bless one another with understanding, forgiveness whenever necessary, reverence for each other's person, and an ever greater outpouring of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That spouses and children affected by divorce may find hope and new life, and th uh, new life in and through the community of believers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who serve in youth ministry may help the young to grow in reverence for the gift of sexuality and the beauty of chastity. And that many of our young people may be open to the possibility of a church vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who struggle with mental illness and addictions, may find understanding and acceptance. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the seriously ill in our community and among our family members and friends may be gifted with love's comfort and the healing touch of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. That the sorrowing among us may be consoled by God's great hope of life without end. And all our beloved dead rejoice forever in what God has prepared for those who love him. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. And for all those suffering in Turkey and in Syria, in these um, disaster-wracked lands from earthquake, for those that are working diligently to help rescue to those in the church who are coming to bring the hope of God and the love of God. And for all those caught in these war-torn lands like Ukraine, that the peace of God would be around their hearts and souls and the wisdom of God would be given to their leaders. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, uh, help us to choose life this day and every day. Guide us in keeping your commandments and the ways of your kingdom. Attend uh, to use our prayers, which we raise up to you through Christ our Lord. You may be seated. Please join us in Holy God, we praise thy name. Number 197.
Let us pray together that this our offering may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of His name for our good and all holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, uh, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and ju to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God uh, living and true existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in an approachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works with wisdom and love. You formed men and women in your own image and entrusted the whole world to their care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, they might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience they have lost your friendship, you did not abandon them to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And so, you so love this world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior and Redeemer, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work on, in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit 
graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, uh, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, and do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into the one body of the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, Remember now all who have, whom we offer this sacrifice for, especially for your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph Tyson, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ. We commend all our benefactors, all those who through their generosity continue to support your mission on this earth in our parish, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on this world 
all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now as one family, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those Deliver us, Lord, uh, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of our Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold uh, the Lamb of God. Behold uh, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are welcome to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy they should enter in my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
stars of night I will make their darkness bright who will bear my light to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that all who believe in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you sit down just for a moment, please? As announced last week, and I'm going to ask the ushers to begin, um, Today we're taking up a second collection for the Pro Family Prepares Ministry, which offer a pregnancy and parent support. Prepares is an initiative of the Washington State Bishops to provide a nurturing response and promise to mothers and fathers who have chosen life. A promise of support and care from pregnancy to the child's fifth birthday. Regardless of religious beliefs, this parish-based program offers low-income families vital life-affirming services. Please, consider assisting this program with your generous support. We'd also like to remind you of the invitation to participate in the fifth worldwide Rosary Mater Fatima International being hosted by our Diocese of Yakima on Monday, February 20th at St. Paul's Cathedral in Yakima. This event will begin at 10.30 a.m. with Holy Mass followed by the Rosary at 11.30. The Eternal Word Television and Radio Network, EWTN, will televise and carry the event. To help prepare us, Next Sunday, February 19th, during the coffee hour, a video about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary will be shown. Please, pray for the success of this important worldwide event. For those who are unable to travel to Yakima, our parish will broadcast the event on a large screen in the parish hall. And on Thursday, February 16th, at 7 p.m., all parishioners are invited to come and pray the Holy Rosary bilingually here in the church. Tickets are now on sale for the 43rd annual St. Joe's School Have a Heart Auction. The auction will be right here in the church hall on the evening of February 25th. If you've never been before, it's a great opportunity to fellowship and meet other families from the parish and the community, all while supporting our beloved school. Auction members will be selling tickets for the night of the auction. Our, all, um, our always popular Hearts of Gold raffle tickets, where you could potentially win a year's tuition to send your child or another child to St. Joe's. And new this year, a raffle to win a Subaru Outback, gifted to us by JJ's Auto Sales. If you don't see auction members in the back of the church after Mass, you can buy auction tickets online at stjoesauction.com and raffle tickets at both the church and the school offices. And finally, since this is the second Sunday of the month, there is a coffee hour after this Mass which includes Judy Whitlinger's wide variety of fabulous cookies and muffins in the parish hall. All are invited to come and participate. The Lord be with you. May our loving God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying God by your lives.
Take the word of God with you as you go. Number 382.